Now, you're hearing a lot of discussion now about consumer protection. Well, I'll tell you one aspect of consumer protection that this bill does not begin to, to touch, and that is the outrageously high interest rates that credit card companies and banks are charging ordinary Americans. I get calls every week from people who are disgusted that they're forced to pay 25 or 30 percent interest rates on their credit cards. That is usury. That is loan sharking. Every major religion on earth condemns usury, and we've got to put an end to it. There are a number of issues that are out there. I mean, literally dozens that we can deal with. But I wanted to focus on three basic issues. Uh, number one is the issue of Fed transparency, which is what you're talking about. Now, Robert, during the bailout, uh, our friends at the Fed, led by Chairman Bernanke, lent trillions of dollars, trillions of dollars in zero or almost zero interest loans to the major financial institutions. This was above and beyond the TARP funding. Robert, do you know which financial institutions received that money? No. You don't. Nor does anybody else in the United States of America. I asked Ben Bernanke when he came before the Budget Committee on which I served, tell me, who received trillions of dollars of taxpayer money? And he said, I'm not going to tell you. I think that, that is beyond belief. And that very day, we introduced legislation uh, which would have the Fed disclose the financial institutions that received that money and what they did with that money. And we also introduced legislation, as part of that legislation, the need for a GAO audit of the Fed. Uh, this legislation, interestingly enough, has support from both very conservative people and very progressive people. Because I think most Americans just cannot understand that trillions of dollars can be lent out, and we don't know who received it. We don't know what they did with the money. One of the scams that I fear may well have happened, this is really quite incredible, is that these large financial institutions received zero interest loans from the Fed, and then they invested in government bonds at 25 3%. Mm. So imagine that. Billions of dollars, you get zero, and you invest it in government-guaranteed uh, bonds at 3%. How's that for a scam? That's outrageous. It is. And so that's one of the issues. Credit cards we've talked about and the need to uh, put a cap on the outrageous interest rates that Wall Street is charging uh, consumers of credit cards. People have credit cards. The last issue that we're working very hard on is this whole concept of concentration of ownership within the financial industry. And most people don't understand this. We have four huge financial institutions in this country today that own more than $7 trillion in assets, which is more than 50% of the GDP of the United States of America, the gross domestic product. Four financial institutions. They issue two-thirds, two out of every three credit cards that are issued come from these four banks. Half of the mortgages come from these four banks. And to my mind, when you have institutions of this enormous size, you have got to begin the process of breaking them up. If they are too big to fail, they are too big to exist. And this is not only in terms of taxpayer liability for too big to fail, and when they go down, they take half the economy with them. It is the issue of a competitive economy. Now, what kind of co competition do you have? when you have four large financial institutions with so much economic power over the lives of the American people. So that's an issue we are also going to be fighting on, break up these large financial institutions so that we end the kind of economic power that they have over our economy.